how do you how do you nail it where where like what you know when when somebody arrives on your website whether that's the home page or maybe a product detail page like how do you you know get people to engage how do you connect with them authentically like what's what's the approach that that you all take and and it goes back and love that question because it goes back to what Amazon's doing well, right? And I, I, we have this very interesting, you know, chart a, a, at work and we, we look at it every day. It's, it's the Amazon promise, right? Like what are the things that Amazon helps you do? And, uh, of course, there's your discovery, right? Which is your the awareness part that we spoke about. How do people discover products or brands? And then there is the middle part of the funnel, which is, you know, browse, buy, you know, uh, decide, purchase, right? That that part of your funnel. And then there is, of course, like, you know, your um, uh, support, fulfillment, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, any kind of returns, policies, and, you know, that, that fulfillment part. So three major chunks, uh, is what a typical Amazon, for example, does today. But when you zoom in and you look at it, the middle part, which is browse and buy, you know, decide and decide and uh, swipe your credit card, right? That's the part that's um, that is just brilliant in Amazon and elements uh, many different strategies and tactics you would you'd be very familiar with if you if you have ever shopped on Amazon. Things like, you know, frequently bought together, things like here are recommended products based on what you've bought before. There are things like, uh, you know, customer uh, reviews. There are things like comparison. When you're browsing some products, you have like great comparison coming up. Um, in fact, something as simple as do I understand the product specifications better? I mean, a Amazon uh, product details pages are amazing at explaining, you know, where even in the in the image carousal, you have all these like, uh, these are the ingredients, uh, you know, this is how you use your product. This product's great for, for example, if it's electronics, it'll be like, hey, battery life XYZ versus if you're buying skincare, it'll talk about like the ingredients and, you know, the origin and stuff, stuff like that. So lots of different strategies. But if you like the three primary, uh, you know, segments of these strategies, it's data driven merchandising. So it's not just merchandising, which is essentially super elemental to, uh, I think, retail merchandising is how do you package and talk about your product, right? How do you package that in the right way? Uh, so uh, everything from your materials to specifications to, uh, you know, ingredients to how you bundle it, like, for example, your pods go with the with the iPhone, right? Like those those are also great, super important elements of merchandising. But is it data driven? That's what Amazon nails. So it really nails uh, the fact that different segments and different kinds of customers um, look for different reasons of why they buy. So they will always surface the information on the products that you're searching for in the right way, right, for you. So if I'm a value shopper and I'm looking for things which are, you know, uh, good prices and, uh, you know, great discounts and they work for me, uh, uh, all of that, like, am I getting good return on my money spent versus someone who's looking for probably, uh, uh, you know, uh, more about the brand or more about, uh, you know, performance right? Like gamers, when they're looking for phones, they look for uh, performance versus I, I'll be looking for something else. So I think those are, that is merchandising. How do you package information about the product, but using data? Um, so data-driven merchandising is something that, you know, greats like Amazon or Walmart do really well. The second thing is sales and promotions. We all love a good deal, um, but lightning sales, I think we, we love that, right? On Amazon, you get this little lightning deal and it's just there for the next one hour and you're super excited and you actually take the decision to swipe out that credit card at that moment. So sales and promotions, but making it meaningful, uh, different kinds of sales and promotions, buy one, get X free, you know? So there are many different strategies there again, but Amazon really nails it at ensuring that it has the right kind of sales strategy and discounting and promotion strategy again for the right segment. And third, you know, fundamental, uh, uh, you know, way that they have the browse and buy funnel is, um, uh, is personalization. So again, for these different segments recommended for me frequently bought, if I'm buying X people who bought this also buy these, right? So these are very simple again, constructs, but you see that, 
used amazingly um, for us to actually take decisions faster. For example, in certain segments, it's table stakes. As new parents, people really want to make sure they don't know what what to what goes with rash cream. So they need that. Oh, diapers come with rash cream. Oh, I never thought of that. Right. So it actually it it might seem like it's a way for people to buy more, but a lot of times, based on the category, it's important for even cus- customers to understand what goes along with that. Like for toys and baby care frequently bought together is a super important way for them to buy. They don't know otherwise. New parents don't know what products go well with each other. So again, three primary things within the buy, uh, you know, and actual buy funnel, browse and buy funnel is data-driven merchandising, awesome sales and promotions, exciting things that, you know, grab our attention and make us just tip over and personalizing it based on our intent and our needs, right? And who we are as a customer segment. These are when, when you talk about these three elements, it sounds like such complicated infrastructural pieces like, oh, data driven merchandising or, you know, exciting sales and promotions. How do I even know uh, whether do I run a buy one, get one or a flash? I don't know what to do. Or And personalization, of course, for majority of the e-commerce, uh, you know, retail world, that sounds like something which is so difficult. Like, what are the right segments? How do I understand? How do I test out what works for the right segments? So these are three things that, uh, you know, marketplaces like Amazon have. And that's the part that is really missing in the, um, when you talk to any retailer today, any young brand or even brands who are in 30, 40, 50 million in GMV who are running on a lean team of five or six people. This is the infrastructure that's very complicated and they don't know what to do. How do we implement it? There are great solutions out there, but they are more enterprise grade and um, most brands find it very, very difficult to implement it being a just five or 10 member team. Got it. So a lot of the focus for you and your team is helping to address those three core needs, like like you just mentioned. And what I find fascinating about all of those three or those three needs, so the personalization, the sales and promotions, the data-driven merchandising, like a lot of getting that right requires you to like intimately understand who you're selling to and what's relevant to them. Like even your example of parents like with bundling products like you have to know or at least maybe you were a parent as you're building this product but like if you're not how does some person on a product team who might have just entered their career you know um really get to a place where they know that that's what the need is and to me like a big part of what we do at user testing is really understanding customers as people as human beings and not just big data 